So I was sitting in my first ever therapy session. And I was trying to unpack a lifetime of overwhelm and my total career, what I thought was failure at this point. And my therapist says, you really need to cut your mother out of your life. So you know like how you can say whatever you want about your family, but when someone else does, it is wildly inappropriate. So I had that reaction. And I never saw this therapist again. I was like, okay, we're, we're done. But I'm now here with all of you in the future, and I can tell you she was absolutely correct. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The connection between career, plateaus, getting stuck, whatever you want to call it, and healing from past trauma. But before we get into that, I need to tell you that I am not here to bash mothers. I love moms. Nearly everyone in the world, or every, every culture, is, is very pro-moms. We all love the mother figure, right? So it makes it very taboo for me to come up here and tell you about my issues with my mother. But I am a mom. I have two kids, they're sitting over there. So we, I love my mom. What the heck, where is my extra slide? So I have another slide there and it is in here today. So, but I do, I, I love the mother figure. So that's not what we're doing today. So don't worry, we can all let out a big sigh. This isn't a trauma dump session. But what, what we really are getting into today is, is the fact that there is a huge connection between the healing that needs to be done and business. Now, as a neurodivergent business coach, my clients will come to me and say, hey, you know, this is, this is going on. This is where I am in my business. And I will find that there is something going on. And it has to do with the past trauma. But as we all saw in this guy, I am a coach. I am not a therapist. I strongly recommend that my clients work with a therapist alongside of, of anything that I do with them because coaching and therapy go hand in hand. We just trot along happily. And that's where we pick up our journey. Nope, not to that slide. I have so many slides, you guys. It's going to be fun. So when we go on this journey, what I found is that my personal journey closely mirrors my clients. And where I got stuck in my career was I let my mother dictate where my career was going to go. That's how I ended up in that therapist's office. My first job, my mom got me. She had my aunt land me a job with a well-known phone company setting up phone service. I was working in a basement, tethered to a desk by my headset, oppressive overhead lighting. How many people have worked in a call center? It's a nightmare. That was me, and as much as I learned from there, from that job, it, I'm not really complaining because I learned so much, but I'm definitely complaining, you guys. It did teach me a lot. And my second job, it was another nepotism slam dunk. I'm not going to lie. My aunt got me the job, but she, my mom had gotten her that job. And it was cushy. I was comfortable until the FBI took my boss out in handcuffs. So, womp womp. And then, 
from there, I kind of, I had to face the fact that being raised by narcissists, I was really living my life to be a reflection of my family. And I didn't want to disappoint them. I had been told that everything I did was a reflection of them. And this belief was further beat into me, if you will. When my husband and I announced my pregnancy with my oldest child and my stepfather said, did you think about us when you did this? No, I can assure you, I did not think about my stepfather during the conception of my child. <laughs> so gross. So gross. But I still had to go back to that job. I was still stuck in a job with a boss who was convicted, by the way, of embezzling millions. And I told everybody, everybody, that I was stuck. They didn't value me. It was, it was me, it was my work problem, but it wasn't a work problem, right? You guys figured this out. It wasn't a work problem. It was my problem. I needed to get over myself, but I was telling everybody, <laughs> my, my company, they don't value me. But it's rarely a business problem. And this is the point where my clients come to me. They have a business problem. They want a business solution. According to the CDC, 62% of adults surveyed reporting, reported having at least one, just one, potentially traumatic event occur in childhood. 62%, that's more than half. We're just gonna let that sink in for like a second because the next stat I'm gonna give you, so much more of a bummer and this one's already a bummer. Toxic stress changes your brain. These changes, tension issues, Impulsive behavior, decision making, emotional regulation, stress response. Those are really closely tied to your professional development, aren't they? How, how do you get through work when you're dealing with this? So next, I would like for you to hear from Alexis. Alexis was diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. She says choosing to take her career freelance in 2022 is an eye-opening year for her. She didn't realize how closely linked that self-discovery and selling her services were. But starting her business, it really put things into perspective. But wait until you actually see this direct quote. Her childhood taught her one thing, that being herself wasn't okay. And that doesn't have anything to do with being adopted or having ADHD. That's what she was told. 
When you're told that being yourself isn't okay, how do you come back from that? Instances of childhood trauma result in a higher instance of career sabotage, statistically. So where do we go from here? Well, let's put this into an analogy we can all have some fun with. So have you ever done a group project, like back in school? And you are amazing. You turned in the Mona Lisa. And the rest of your group turned in stick figures. And your grade reflects it. So the grade comes back, and somehow it's a D. You turned in A-plus work, so that's shocking, shocking behavior. And it comes back, and you're like, all right, well, I blame everyone else because I am amazing, and there is no way that that is my work reflected in that. If Tyler had done his slides, we would have been fine. So the way that we proceed from here, and by the way, this may or may not be a true story about my experiences in school. The way we proceed is that we switch from blame, which humans are hardwired to do, to responsibility. And by accepting personal responsibility, we're able to go ahead and start to change the things that we do have control over. Now, we don't have control over the past, right? We, I mean, if you guys can control the past, good for you. But we don't have control over the past. But we do have control over the future. You have control over the decisions that you make. And you can be better informed over why you're making those decisions. Now let's look at Maria. As a, pro, as a product of parental trauma, she found herself accepting similar treatments in her relationships. Taking personal responsibility was absolutely vital to break her generational trauma. Here's what's important when you accept responsibility. You don't have to forgive those who did this to you. But what came up for her is she, accept, she had to look shame and guilt straight in the face. And this is shame and guilt she was carrying around for decades. But taking the personal responsibility for her part in her journey, she was able to take that step in her healing journey. Maria is a Chicana neurodivergent, military veteran, first generation American. Shame, guilt, self-blame, all of this causes you to go into hiding. Looking at it from a business perspective, how, how, how do you build a business when you're hiding? You're not going to, you're gonna, <laughs> it's gonna fail, right? When you're looking for a place to eat, do you like to play hide and seek? Or do you go to the one with the big sign? Pr pretty easy. But the biggest concern that my clients have when they come to me is that they don't want to spend the time. They don't want to spend the time dealing with this. They just want me to fix their business problem. I get that. I have ADHD and I love, love the quick hit of dopamine that you get from a quick win. It's one of my favorite things. But I'm also autistic, you guys, so I recognize patterns. And the pattern of success is to fix your issues. And when you fix those issues, you go further faster. And now we're going to hear from Jamie, who fixed her issues 
and was able to see success. No idea that the fear of rejection kept her from actually selling. What did I say? You should really prioritize therapy. Her business skyrocketed and it released her from her chains of not feeling worthy. So, as for me, you probably figure out that I quit that job from earlier. But what you didn't know yet is that I quit like five more jobs after it. I just kept going, I just kept quitting, I quit them all. And there were eventually like a whole bunch, like Maggie Isley trading cards. Like I had so many business cards, it was ridiculous. But the reason I did it was I accepted personal responsibility for my success. I wasn't about to sit down and settle. I started a tiny business like neurodivergent people do. We are 300% more likely to start a business. And I started this tiny business that grew into a larger venture and allowed me eventually to start a second business. And I'm eternally grateful for that therapist for letting me know that it was okay to release and heal the relationship with my mother to allow me the space to do this. And I challenge all of you when you hit a business plateau to ask yourself the important questions of is this something that could be stemming from an experience that you've had? Is this something that you can accept responsibility for your future? Is it something that needs healed? And that's all I have for you today. Thank you.